Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. The time for talk is over as we are just mere moments away from the Super Bowl. Two teams now have a chance to prove they are the best. It's the Cardinals going up against the Eagles. So the time has come. Let's send you out to the stadium and join the two men that will have the Super Bowl call. Here are Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, they broke ground on this place in the year 2000, opened it in August of 2002, and it's been the home of this franchise ever since. Welcome to NRG Stadium in Houston. We count down to kickoff in what should be an epic one here between the Arizona Cardinals and the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm Brandon Gunn. To my left is my good friend Charles Davis, and what a thrill to be here for the biggest one of them all, the Super Bowl. And it seems to get bigger every year. The lights get brighter. The cameras more numerous. And I don't know. There's just so much that goes into this game. It's an honor to be here, isn't it? It is an honor, and I can't wait to share this game with you. This is going to be a whole lot of fun. You're my partner, my best friend. I can't imagine being anywhere else but right here with you. And just think about it this way. You mentioned the magnitude. This is no longer just a game for America or even North America. This is worldwide. People watching from just about every country in the world. This is impressive. The biggest stage, the biggest game, and just about ready to roll. We begin the next half century of Super Bowls to a strobe of flashes. Super Bowl 51 from Houston is underway. This will be taken in at the one. No, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. So out come the Cardinals now for their opening drive. And a look here at their go-to guy under center. Takes this for three to the 29. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times. And they operate as a terrific unit. Decent chunk of yardage still left here. Second and seven. the shotgun he'll look to throw and this is caught on the sideline but no they'll say out of bounds he caught it but was not in bounds incomplete defensive side of the ball for the Eagles here they are the starting 11 and you were telling me before the game taking this from your knowledge bank that if they need to improve anywhere in 2017 maybe in the secondary is that right I think you're right on that one because I think they're very happy with Malcolm Jenkins and Rodney McLeod down the middle as the safeties but they'd love to make an upgrade on the corner position because if you're playing in the NFC East there's some guys who can go out and get the football and then I think up front they're looking for a bigger year from Fletcher Cox he's their bell cow on defense a defensive tackle defensive end they need to have that all pro season from him again in 2017 back to throw and he dropped it 
Now it was tipped. Altered the ball a little bit, but he dropped it. And now fourth down. But partner, anytime someone tells me that fundamentals are leaving the game, I'm going to show them this play because they couldn't get to the passer. So what do you have to do? Get your hands up in the passing lane, and they batted it away on a third down attempt. Take it in at the 22. <laughs> A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Eagles take possession. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. They come out here in the eye. And he'll give it here to his running back. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. Ready now for second and nine. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A good pick up there of 20 yards. One of the good things offenses did years ago was they lettered their gaps the same on each side. A gap between guard and center on either side. That's what you want to control when you're trying to run the ball up the middle. And why is that? Because typically you either have a big nose guard in there in an odd front, three-man front, or you have defensive tackles that might line up in the A-gaps trying to gain an advantage and get upfield themselves. If you can control that, it gives the back plenty of space to pick and choose where to go. And there, a great inside run, broke the contact and got some space. They'll run it now out of the gun. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. and He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Now this past year, Arizona finished seven, eight, and one. Here are the defensive starters for the Cardinals. What do you make of this football team defensively heading into next year, Charles? Well, they're an aggressive group, and they didn't generate the same number of takeaways that they normally do. But I think that coming back in 2017, a great core of players and they'll get Tyron Matthew back. And if they get him back at his 2015 level, look out, because Patrick Peterson's one of the best corners in the game as well. He'll look to throw. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. 
And the hitch route has run really well. That jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space. All you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. First and goal defense with a bats against the wall. And he's in for an Eagles touchdown. A great effort there. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Eagles have taken the early lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Caleb Sturgis now for the point after. He's got it, and the Eagles lead at 7 zip. So this drive spans seven plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Now after the touchdown, it's Sturgis to send it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. one up to the 26. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They'll look to throw here. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. to mark him down at the 39. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. And the offense lining up first and 10. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets them a new set of downs. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends former wide receivers who can run not necessarily block very well in this case though we saw two tight ends on the field both of them with the ability to block and he ran the ball successfully behind that power set Green, 39. Green, 39. they'll look to throw here on first down finding time incomplete I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. His throw incomplete. Thank you. 
Offense trying to avoid stalling out, facing a third and ten. before he's taken down at the 27. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Let's go! Blue Lady! Blue Lady! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. A second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. A lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yards runs, and goes to one of those. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Take this from the nine down to about the seven. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three yard line. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. Back to throw here. Sack back in the 16-yard line. That will bring up fourth down and an 11-yard loss to Boone. And I guess, partner, you call that a covered sack. Oh, without a doubt, because where did he have to go with the football? I know everybody wants to get on him about, hey, get rid of the football. You had too much time in the pocket. But he's scanning the field, nowhere to go, and that allowed the pressure to ultimately get to him. On fourth down, the Cards will call on Chandler Catanzaro to try and put up three. And Catanzaro's kick is right through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. To the main field goal, Catton Zero to boot this one away on the kickoff. This is fielded a couple yards deep. <laughs> oh, look at the juke. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24 yard line. 
We focus our attention on the Cardinals' defense now. They struggled that last drive. They were kind of hit two ways, both with the run and the pass. And I love how you brought hit into it because a lot of defense coordinators like to show a little cut-up film the night before a game. And they usually have some boxing in there, and it always shows the guy being the aggressor, the guy on his toes punching, not back on his heels taking punches, and that's where this defense was on the last possession. They were on their heels. Will they be on their heels again? Let's see. Take it ahead to the 28-yard line. And yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. They come out here in the eye. And on the ground they go with a running back. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. He's quite an eyeful, isn't he? Big, strong, physical guy. When he came out of school, when I looked at my draft board, I went back through my notes to see how I had him rated. The number two back on my board coming out of college. Why? As I mentioned, big, strong, powerful guy, faster than you would think and has the ability to catch the football out of the backfield, something that we didn't know he truly possessed. We saw that in the offseason workout. Now he's putting his running ability to good use in the NFL. And nearly picked off there, almost intercepted. Instead, second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Now a handoff looking right. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And that's why you see so many teams play a 3-4 defense, because that set gives you a lot of flexibility about where to bring pressure from, and it's hard for an offense to pick it up. Left side, right side, up the middle, especially with some really flexible linebackers. It's already second and 12. The defense hoping to push them back more. scrimmage and taken down one yard officially on the pickup and it'll leave them with a third and 11. Partner we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football but these short runs they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along you control the clock you control the ball and that way you often control the game. So one quarter down here in Super Bowl 51. 7-3 the score. The NFL on EA Sports continues right after this message. The NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Head & Shoulders. Shoulders were made for greatness, not dandruff. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two. They're in the midst of a nice drive, but facing a third and long here. And 
An extra DB added here for the cards on third. Let's go. play coverage. They'll look to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Call it a three-yard gain, and that's going to make it fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. So now on fourth down, the Eagles will hand things over to their field goal kicker, and that's Caleb Sturgis. On the left hash, officially, it's called a 51-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super tall. <laughs> Takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Second down and four. going to lead to a third down. The previous play was a nice run. So they came back with the draw. I think they were trying to fool the defense into thinking they would throw the ball and wanted to run it again. Unsuccessful, but this team is definitely showing they want to keep it on the ground. Third and five, so they bring in an extra defensive back. Right, expecting pass. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Set. Green, 39! Green, 39! They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's brought down. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And a quick throw here, that's complete. A gain of six there on first. yards remaining now on second down. Right, here we go. Three, nine, two, one, three. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Right. 
And I know it's hard in live action, but you've got to keep your hands away from the face. That's a 15-yard penalty. You work on it all the time, making sure your target area is lower and trying to keep your hands away from the face mask so you don't get the big penalty. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Set up a throw. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. Not able to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. A great play there. A 12-yard touchdown run. And the Cardinals have taken the lead. And there you go, nothing really too complex. Block, keep your assignments, let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking, beats good tackling on that play. End result, touchdown. Here's Chandler Catanzaro for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it winds up at a touchdown for Arizona. Zero after the touchdown to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And his guys are going to start their drive right at the 20 yard line. And out now come the Eagles. Last time out, they had that long 50 plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay. Do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Here we go now. Three, three. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Going right side here, and that's complete. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. So a little grabbing there, but this time it goes against the offense for holding. down he's gonna sling this deep downfield he's got a man complete a big play there for Philly 44 yards we just saw him hit a big play there on a deep post and most of the time the post isn't available because you usually have defenders in the middle of the field but if you throw enough curls and crossing routes and underneath routes <laughs> I know from experience they get tired of watching those balls get caught. They start to creep up a little bit, and that's when you can hit them big over the top. Now, out of the gun. And he 
He's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. fake. They'll look to throw. Throwing right and that's complete. And he gets us all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. Give him 30 yards there. Now that play will end up on the highlights and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. And now the offense operates in the red zone. Hang on now. Blue line ah! On first down, he'll drop to throw. This will be caught just inside the 10. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, it, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. Now Sturgis on to add the extra point. And that makes it 14-10. plays there on that drive and it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown Now after the touchdown, it's Sturgis to send it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, Every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch it in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, give up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do we have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. A little lull in the action here to go over an offseason storyline. It's kind of interesting. L.A., a couple years ago, they have no teams, and now they're going to have two with the move from San Diego to L.A. What does that mean for the league and for the Chargers? It seems like an easier transition, doesn't it, than St. Louis when they move back to Los Angeles? Less to culture shock. <laughs> Less culture shock. Less, you know, obviously geography, the whole deal. But it's a 
transition to still is not going to be easy. Remember, they're going to go play in a soccer stadium, essentially, mm -hmm. for at least the first couple of years before they share a stadium with the Rams. So that changes things. Obviously, trying to create an identity in the market they haven't been in in a long time. They began as the Los Angeles Chargers, but only played one season as such. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. They'll set up to throw. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and that just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Charles on the slant. You always need good ball placement. They got it there. Brandon, the quarterback, put it in the exact perfect spot. Right to the upfield shoulder of the receiver. And he used his body to keep the defender away. play fake he'll look to throw he's gonna loft one deep left side here so the long attempt falls innocently to the ground and it brings up third one of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading trying to figure out what they're doing and on that one they had to fly just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it what people call a dagger route trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out in this case though they're not able to get it done yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and in inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. All right, here we go. Blue landing. They go play action here on first down. And he finds a man with a crossing route. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. No, I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. to throw now on first down and he will find his man on the outside a gain of six there on first the completion was given up but that's why you play zone defense so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught and you don't give up much run after the catch to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. It's almost a tendency breaker. 
And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because they, you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. Looking to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. a play fake as they set up to throw surveying the field and he's got his man in stride complete and he is into the end zone touchdown Philadelphia their dangerous wide receiver 23 yards for the touchdown and the Eagles add on to their lead so on third and medium they dial up the pass and it works to hit the end zone and it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. It's good, and it's 21-10. That time, a nine-play drive. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Now after the touchdown, it's Sturgis to send it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. the drive quick hitter here it's complete five yards on the catch there brings up second down two minutes to play here in the first half we're back to Super Bowl 51 after this a reminder coming up at the intermission we'll get highlights of this Super Bowl from Larry Ridley and the crew in Orlando with our EA Sports halftime report. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. It's a tried-and-true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. 
If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. And the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. And he'll be grabbed from behind and swung down like a ragdoll. And now the Eagles going to signal for a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Drew Butler now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And it's fielded at the 34. And it's a 45-yard punt and eight on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. They'll look to throw here. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. It'll go as a gain of 12. And the Eagles are going to have a first down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. this one away incomplete now that'll bring up second down on the completion and it sets up a third down well the strategy was evident there get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback who's usually going to win that one the tight end but not there not in this situation how about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle the 22 is the line to gain here on third down they'll look to throw again got a man him in stride and they do get him down but not before he reaches the four yard line now whistles come in we're going to get a timeout here by the offense and with half time on the horizon they'll be out of timeouts from here forward 
So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Let's go! Green 39! Green 39! They'll stick with the passing game as he... And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver as the first half is winding down. And the Eagles had six to their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Point after now from Sturgis. And the lead is up to 18 now. So the drive there took six plays, and it was capped off by an Eagles touchdown. Now after the touchdown, it's Sturgis to send it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. second down so we've reached intermission in what has been a back and forth Super Bowl 51 from Houston as we send you on over to Orlando where we'll check in with Larry Redley he's got our EA Sports halftime report Larry thanks Brandon and welcome to our EA halftime report I'm Larry Ridley. The Eagles want to continue to give their fans something to cheer about in the second half the Cardinals know it's always hard to come in and get a win on the road but they're not out of this one yet here we go. Let's do this. Here's your first half highlights. Eagles line up at the three. They'll go with the run here, and he'll take it in for the touchdown. They strike first in the half. Cardinals line up at the 13. They'll go to the ground here, and he caps off the six-play drive with the score, which takes the lead to three. Eagles with the ball early in the second. Here the catch is made way downfield, and he'll be tackled at the 46-yard line. Later on the drive, they'll go to the ground and pound here, and this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. They're now on top by four. Eagles come out on third and four. Pass coverage will break down here. And after the short pass, he'll score. The Eagles push their lead to 11. Final seconds in the first half. Completion is made across the middle of the field. And that is a house call. That takes the lead up to 18. All right, Larry, indeed a one-sided affair to this point as we get set for half two.
So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. They go play action here on first down. And the pressure will bring him down here. The Cardinals get home for the sack. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes his sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> the previous play he knows they're coming after him again a little bit of guts to stand in there take the hit and successfully complete the screen pass really well done short of the sticks after that completion and now it's third down for this offense he'll drop the throw and it is incomplete well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot, but they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Cards are going to have the football with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. And now working their way back onto the field, the Eagles defense. second down. Pardon me, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm, but when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's able to get up here to the 26. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. It's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So the offense has it first and ten. They'll come out in the pistol. And to give this time to the tailback. <laughs> and he'll push his way forward to about the 32. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick. He's been decisive. And he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Right. 
Second down following the run. Seven. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. Fresh set of downs here. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. They come out Let's here go. in the eye. Green, 39. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Seven yards to go on second down. Four down, four down. Now let's go. Three, nine, They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. And they'll go on the ground. And he'll get inside the 40 to maybe the 38-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no game. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. It's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage. Okay. Yeah, in this case. Hurry up, here we go. Green 39. Green 39. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. So the offense readies for a second and four. They'll 
run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game, and with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Let's go! They'll look to throw now on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense. Exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. Sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it, and boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup, and guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. They come out here in the eye. And to give this time to the tailback. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. How many times do we hear from coaches get north and south as a runner, especially in short yardage situations? I'd say third and one counts. That didn't happen there. Instead, they went backwards. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, it's still a good size lead, so they haven't necessarily needed him. But this is now two missed field goals for him in this game so far. Yeah, and the question now is, will he be prepared when they do need him? Whether that's later in this game or sometime down the line, having a kicker you can count on is definitely imperative. We put our attention now on the Eagles' defense. And yeah, they got to be feeling good about forcing that long missed field goal the last go around. And you know what upsets a kicker more than anything? Is missing a kick they think they can make and feeling like the other side believes that they had something to do with it. And it doesn't matter to those guys on defense. I know they're taking full credit. Yep, we forced him into the miss, and they're going to ride that confidence the rest of the way. We'll see if the kicker is able to get his confidence back as well. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. So second and medium, second and five now. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game, and I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And some room to maneuver. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Most players will tell you that night games, while they can be fun, they're really hard to prepare for because you wake up on game day and all you want to do is get to the stadium and let's get going. But you got to bank that fire a little bit and hold it until the evening. It's almost like a Broadway premiere. Got to wait until the nighttime to go out there in front of the bright lights. And boy, has he harnessed himself really well. And now he's unleashing it on the opponents. One quarter remains here in the Super Bowl. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's Cardinal football, but they trail here as we get set to bring you the fourth and final quarter. So here we go, first and ten now. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Hey, four down, four down. Here we go now. Blue landing. Blue landing. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Very difficult night for the guys on offense. They've got to be looking at each other in the huddle and on the sidelines. How are we going to find some open space to complete a pass and find open room to run? This defense all night long has squeezed down the passing lanes, made plays on the football. It's really been a thing of beauty for them. He's got to figure all day long prepping for the game. They had to have talked about it again and again. Squeeze passing lanes and we'll be in great shape. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. If they're going to have a shot in this Super Bowl, they're going to need this one on fourth down. They'll give it to him right up the gut. He needed two, but he doesn't come anywhere close. And the Eagles defense able to hold. Well, they knew who to turn to on fourth down. Their horse, they needed the short yardage. He just couldn't get it. And that's a surprise because normally that's bread and butter for them, right? Hand it to the big guy, let him go, pick up the first down. Didn't get it there. All credit to the defense. Usually, even if they know he's coming, he can't be stopped. And they got it done on that play. Now, out of the gun. 
And some space here. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. When a coaching staff sees their team run the ball this successfully in the fourth quarter, they're really excited because you can plan for a running game all you want and want to press that advantage when you get it. But for the most part, it's a little bit of a surprise. And right now, they've got to keep that going, want to continue to grind out the clock because it's definitely in their favor at this stage of the game. Can they close the game out and continue to do exactly what we just saw there? And that's run the football. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be met at about the 43. And the dreaded face mask penalty, that's going to cost him 15 yards. And it's such a dangerous play. Body going one way, and then your head gets yanked back the other. 15 yards is the right call. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. Here. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Now, that was a big-time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was, and they didn't let them get anywhere near it. So now on is Caleb Sturgis for the Eagle field goal. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. score will stay right where it is and no mistaking that sound it reverberated through the whole stadium and it's the sound brandon no kicker wants to hear it looked like he had it on target the whole way but the upright said uh-uh so out now come the cardinals and this offense last time turned it over went for it on fourth didn't get it they're lucky though because no points against the team on the board but we'll see how they respond yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series. And because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good. But when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Second and five. Hey. Hey, we are. Here we go. Three, out of the gun, they'll look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. 
There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? So here we go, a third down after the second down pass completion. Here we go now. Three, 19. Ah! He'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. On third and one, I think everyone in the stadium thought they'd try and run the football there, but they tried to surprise the defense and hit something through the air. Instead, it results in an incompletion. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Let's go! Green throw! And they'll go with a ground attack here. He needed a yard. He didn't get anything. And the Eagles are going to take over in great field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. Here's the Cardinals' defense as they head out to set up shop. And dare I say, luck was on their side last drive. The short field goal was missed, so... They went unscathed. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I think you nailed it perfectly. Fortunate, because he's not supposed to miss from that distance. No way at all. But the flip side now, though, is he did. And you know there's been a little chatter about that along the way as they went off the field. They're going to try and stay in his head now and see if they can force him into more misses just like that. Here's the option going right. Oh, he's got a little daylight. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Their mobile, agile quarterback with his third touchdown of the Super Bowl. And the Eagles add on to their lead. So a design run all the way, and he took it the distance. I don't know that anybody saw that come. Well, on this play, how about the vision of him being able to see the open field make his move and get there oftentimes defenses have a spy for the quarterback position to try and take care of it on that play if they did it certainly he's lost <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt and he's been a busy man five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead well, i'm not sure if they drew that play up to score but it scored indeed one play on the ground and into the end zone for six Now, after the touchdown, it's Sturgis to send it away. This is taken at his four. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The Cardinals offense now works their way back onto the field. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. time in the pocket and he'll toss this one incomplete seeing no options he throws it away <laughs> offense looking to avoid a third and long at second and ten to throw here and his pass incomplete
Defense has set themselves up nicely. Third and ten now. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Drew Butler now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. This is taken at the 18. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they got easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Well, I'd say that run's pretty emblematic of what we've seen all day long. No matter what they've done on offense, this offensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage, giving them time to throw it, run it, do whatever they wanted. That's why there are points up on the board. And right now, the psyche of the offense, we're in control, and we can do whatever we feel like doing out here on the field. They'll run it now out of the gun. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Up over the 40 to about the 41. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Third down now following the run. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. All right, here we go. Out of the gun now on third down. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Pick up the first across midfield to the 47. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Stays on his feet. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Well, that certainly felt like an example of the defense just saying, OK, <laughs> we've had enough. We've gotten mashed all night long. About time we got a good play in. But flip it over to the offensive side. They've got to be really upset that they allowed a play like that to happen. They were pitching such a great game. They want to keep it going. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And for a right side here, complete. 
And chalked that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. And they just had another big completion there. And I think in days gone by in the NFL, you might have asked, is this a little bit of overkill? Is this rubbing it in? I don't think people feel the same way nowadays. The age-old argument. Then you could say on the other side, if you're going to get angry about it, stop it, right? Go ahead and stop me. And I think a lot of the times they just look at it like, let's just play the game. And however it turns out, it turns out. First times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much. So second and ten here. First times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. One yard, the official pickup there, so it's going to set up third and nine. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Oh, and he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. There's no doubt in my mind. And do you hear that? Do you hear the... It, it, it's not scales, right? I don't hear scales. Do I actually hear a tune I being warbled? I think the fat lady's humming. Yeah, she's doing more than humming. She's, she's building it out she's right going. now. She's going. She's full bore. Yeah, this thing is flat out finished. Now Sturgis on to add the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. A 10-play drive that time. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Now, after the touchdown, it's Sturgis to send it away. This is taken at the three. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The putter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him. <laughs> All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this oh, drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his <laughs> fault. But so, hey, listen. There's got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Here we go. Blue lining. Blue lining. Ah! They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Get the connection there. It's incomplete. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that will be caught. Out of bounds, ruled incomplete here. Mm, close there. He caught it, just wasn't able to stay in bounds. And that's where the sideline it was used as a 12th defender. You know, 11's legal. This one is an imaginary one, one that my college coach used to call Sammy Sideline. <laughs> Sammy Sideline can protect you at times. And in this case, that's exactly what he did for the defenders. 
And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. One of the best routes, one of the favorite routes of any play caller. He just ran that one. Nice little angle route. That's supposed to be a catch, and usually it is, and the running back dropped it. Yeah, I mean, he's a running back, but he's got hands. He should have caught it. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fielded at about the 28. Whoosh! A nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And we have reached the two-minute warning. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Three yards to go on second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add in a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Now the offense lining up first and watch ten. Left, watch left, watch left. He's stopped right there, he's stopped right there. Hey, hurry up, here we go. Right. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Yeah, let me pop out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Four yards on the pickup there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. And the Lombardi Trophy will rest in the city of brotherly love. The Philadelphia Eagles are the Super Bowl champs. And to the Super Bowl champions, they etch their name forever in NFL immortality. That's pretty phenomenal right there. It actually gave me chills just to hear you <laughs> say that because immortality forever and ever. When you look in the record books, you'll see this team. You'll see their picture. That Your name will be a part of it. That's got to be an incredible feeling because it's been a long journey to get there, and now they get a chance to enjoy it. And they are the Super Bowl champs. The Lombardi Trophy is theirs, and so are bragging rights for an entire season. What a season it has been. Feels like we have been there every step of the way. Our entire crew doing a wonderful job 
Thanks to my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. For all those guys, I'm Brandon Gunn signing off. We'll talk to you next season right here on EA Sports.